Hi, I'm Andy Jones, content editor for Plaid's online education program, Let's Paint, and I'd like to welcome you to the February Let's Paint Live uh, class, and this is February 1st. It is the first Thursday in February. So welcome to the second month of the year, and we are live on the Plaid Crafts Facebook group as well as the Plaid Crafts YouTube channel. So welcome everyone. And tonight we are going to be painting our pink rosebud, and as I jokingly say, in just about an hour. But we're gonna do our best to get finished in just about an hour. So Caitlin uh, Smith is here with me. She'll be moderating. If you have a burning question, uh, you can let her know and she will relay that to me and we'll try to get your question answered. We um, actually have questions about the supplies and the printout. Okay. Um, it's on plotonline.com and then I believe if you go to projects, projects. Uh -huh. then it'll show up there. Yes, or you can go to plotonline.com and in the search bar you can type in Rosebud and it will take you right to it. And if you go to our YouTube channel, <laughs> So There's actually places. a link in the description. Okay, so hopefully we're all there. And I have a little three by nine canvas and I have transferred my design on that. Are we overhead? Yes. Okay, thank you, Caitlin. Yep. All right, so I will be doing our uh, close-ups so that you can see what we are doing. So I've transferred my design to my canvas. Now, what is this thing that my canvas is attached to? This is a wooden uh, cradle board and I've just made a couple of loops of tape and stuck my canvas down on it. And this is my handheld easel. So I can paint right to the edge of the canvas and not get paint on me, which I think is a good thing. All right, so let's get started. The first color we're going to put out on our palette uh, is going to be wicker white. Or if you have titanium white, you can use that too. And we have baby pink. And if you don't have baby pink, you can use any light uh, pastel pink that you happen to have. And we are going to put out a bit of blending gel on our palette as well. And let me tell you, let me first show you what the label looks like. There is blending gel and it may focus. Maybe not. Or maybe not. <laughs> but anyway, that's blending gel and blending gel actually slows down the drying time of your acrylic paint, giving you plenty of time to work with it. So we're going to use that tonight to make sure that we have plenty of time to paint our background. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of blending gel on my brush, and I got a pretty big flat brush here, and I'm gonna pick up titanium white, and now it's kind of like a little magic that's happening here because I'm blending my blending gel and my white paint together here on my palette. So I'm already making my white dry slower. Now what I'm going to do is start at the top of my canvas and I'm going all the way from side to side and I want you to take a quick look at this. You can still, well, I don't know why we're not yeah, focusing in. I'm wondering if it's not on autofocus. Okay. It, I can zoom in though through. Okay. Well, what I want you to see is that I can see my design lines through the white paint. So I've covered over my design and I can still see it. That's going to make painting the rose a lot easier. All right. So I'm still just kind of slapping this white paint on and it has the little bit of blending gel mixed in it and I'm almost covering the entire canvas. There's a little bit of space down here that's not painted. So I'm going to pick up a little more blending gel on my brush and then I'm gonna go into the baby pink and I'm secretly mixing my, well it's not even secretly mixing, I'm mixing some of my blending gel into my baby pink and I'm gonna brush this on across the bottom of the canvas and look what's happening. I'm blending this baby pink up into the canvas and it's not dry, it's not sticky. I've got plenty of time to work with it. Why? Because of the magic of the blending gel that's keeping my paint workable for me. So I'm going to wipe some of that excess paint off on my uh, shop towel here, pick up a little bit more of the baby pink and I'm just going to reapply that and blend 
kind of in a crisscross motion with nice long sweeping strokes creating a very smoothly blended background and there's a little blemish in my paint so I'm picking that out with the corner of the brush and getting rid of that. All right, so I'm softly blending, blending, blending. My paint's not drying on me. I've got plenty of time to work with it. And I get this beautifully graded background that goes from baby pink at the bottom of the canvas to white at the top. All right, so any questions, Caitlin? Nope. Okay, very good. So I'm gonna give you a moment to bring your canvas up to this level. Uh, get your background painted and make sure that you can still see your design through it. And while you are doing that, I am going to dry my canvas with my multi-purpose uh, heat pen tool. Okay, it took a little extra time to get this nice and dry because our blending gel uh, slows down our drying time. But we are good to go and I'm going to try to hold this up again so that you can see that you can see my design through my painted background. All right, so hopefully you have your painting brought to this level. Uh, we've got our background on, we can see our design through. If you're having trouble seeing your design through your paint, I recommend that you take a pencil and lightly just draw over any of the design lines you're having a hard time seeing because you don't want to struggle to figure out where you're supposed to be painting. Okay, a lot of information there. But let's put out a little bit of Folk Art Thicket on our palette. And I am going to be using a number six round brush. And this is going to be kind of strange for you if you are not uh, a watercolorist. And we are going to be pretending to be one tonight. And what we're going to do is we are basically going to let our background be our highlight. And we are going to kind of create all of the shading on our leaves using Thicket and a little blending gel. Okay, so we don't have to worry about our paint drying out. I did dampen my brush, blotted it out on a towel, and now I'm picking up a little bit of blending gel, and I'm gonna add a little bit of thicket to this little puddle right here on my palette. So this is pretty transparent color, and because there's all that blending gel there, we don't have to worry about this drying out on us. And let's take a deep breath and we're going to start, you can pick any leaf you want to. I'm going to start with this leaf that's kind of, uh, well, let's put this one right over here. I'm going to start with this little leaf right over here on the left side of the stem, kind of hanging down. And what I'm going to do is use the tip of my brush and I'm going to paint in a vein. Let me hold this up for you to see. sure why we're not really f there you go all right so paint it in the vein and then I'm going to take a little bit more color on the brush and I'm going to start on the outside edge of the leaf and I'm just kind of tapping and patting this green on 
So you see I've outlined one side of the leaf and I'm going to come over to the other side of the leaf and do the same thing. If you want to, you can turn your uh, canvas around so that the bottom of the leaf is toward you. That might be easier for you. And we're just kind of tapping and patting some of that green on so that we've basically outlined our leaf. Now, I'm going to take one side of the leaf and that's going to be my the darker side of my leaf. So on one edge I'm going to simply scooch back and forth and I've kind of colored that in a little bit and on the other side of the leaf I'm going to pick up some more blending gel and we're going to just kind of scooch some of that outline back in toward the center of the leaf. All right so that has softened the outside of my leaf on both edges and I'm going to dry this real quick. And now I'm going to try to explain that I want the blending gel to keep the paint wet so I can play with it. And when I'm done playing with it, I want it dry. So I'm like on this kind of seesaw about keep your paint wet, then dry it. Keep it wet and then dry it. So now we're dry. All right, so I'm going to take the same paint, which is my blending gel and thicket, and I just keep making a little puddle of paint. This time I can make it a little stronger. A little more paint, and it's still not going to dry real quick because we've got all that blending gel in there. And I'm going to come right down that center vein again and I'm going to make sure that I've got little veins that go from the center vein out toward the edge of the leaf. So I'm just going to draw those on. All right, there you can see those little radiating vein lines. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the leaf. Just kind of draw those veins on. I'm going to attempt to zoom in okay so let's see okay yeah that's better it's like in focus when I zoom in through the iPad okay there we go all right so I'm going to take that same green color and I'm just going to kind of tap and dab a little bit more along the outside edge of the leaf and I can wipe that excess color off and because this is still wet I can kind of scooch that color into the leaf all right, I'm not working at that very hard, but you can see, there you go, how we've got some dark green and we are letting our background become our highlight. All right, let's leave that leaf alone and I'm gonna rinse my brush and we're gonna start on, we'll do this big leaf that's off to the right hand side. So some moisture in my brush, some blending gel, and thicket. Now this is not hard painting to do. It might be very different from what you're used to doing, but we're not doing anything hard. All right, so I'm gonna move this right over here so I think you all can see. And I'm taking this mixture of blending gel and thicket, and I'm going to use the tip of my brush and no pressure and paint in my center vein and then I'm going to go to one side of the leaf and I'm going to tap and dab some color right on the outside edge of the leaf wipe my brush off and I'm going to pat and kind of move some of that color toward the center of the leaf that I'm leaving some light areas showing. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side of the leaf. Now, if you are not enjoying this style of painting, which is not traditional, you can paint whatever style of leaf that you are comfortable working with. Then I'm going to start out here at the outside edge. I've got too much color on my brush there, so we'll get rid of some of that and we'll just kind of tap and dab some of this green color in 
from the outside edge of the leaf in toward the center, not covering everything up. You can always pick up some more blending gel and some thicket. And we're just kind of playing with that, bringing some of that in toward the center of the leaf. And that's what our leaf looks like right now. And we're going to dry this real quick. Okay, we've got this much done and it's nice and dry and we're going to come back and we're going to strengthen our green color. So we're going to take some blending gel and thicket. And I'm once again going to take um, the tip of my brush and paint in the center vein line. And just so you know, the tip of all really good round brushes all come to the same kind of point. So it doesn't matter if it's a liner brush or a number two or a four or a six round, they all come to the same tiny little point. Just be sure you don't put much pressure on the brush. All right, so we can darken the outside edge of our leaf and tickle some of that color in toward the center vein. And we could do the same thing on the other side. If you want to make it darker, you can. You don't have to do it all over the entire edge of the leaf. Probably the less you work at these leaves, the prettier they're going to be. All right, so we have some green on the leaf and I'm gonna pick up a little bit more thicket and we're going to paint some radiating vein lines. So we're going to start at the center vein and just carry some of these little veins out toward the edge of the leaf. Um, if I zoom in, can you see it on the monitor that I zoomed in? I can now. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> just have to pay attention to what's going on because once I get started, I'm not really seeing what's going on. Okay. So there is our second leaf done. There you go. Okay, let's move on. So rinsing out my brush, and I don't know why I rinse it out because I'm just going to put the same color back in because we only have one shade of green. So if you want your leaf to be darker, let's go back down here to this little leaf that's already done. If I want that darker, I'm just going to pick up some more thicket in my little mixture of thicket and blending gel and I can come back and I can tap some of that darker green color on and create some extra darkness on that leaf and I'm doing that and I and I can do that because we're adding more layers of color so the more layers you build up the darker that green's going to become all right, let's do this little leaf that's under part of our uh, sepal there and the, on a rose, the green parts that cover the rosebud are called sepals. So I'm going to put some dark green right underneath that sepal and just kind of paint in the outside edges of my leaf there. And I'm going to do the same thing on the top side of that sepal and then we'll paint in the outside edges of that leaf and by painting that in it's tapping and dabbing right along the outside edge of the leaf then we can just wipe our brush and move some of that color in toward the center of the leaf and if I need some extra color I can dab that on and turn things around so it's easier for you to paint. And I'm tapping and dabbing some more dark color above that sepal. 
and I'll put in a center vein line here and make sure that one side of our leaf gets to be a little darker and we darken that by simply adding more paint on. This really, once you kind of catch on to the idea of what you're doing, it's pretty easy going because we got one color, one brush, and we're making progress. So there is that leaf, and we can dry that, or we can leave that alone, and we can paint this other leaf. Let's do that. Because we only have an hour, and I know you all would rather paint a rosebud than a bunch of leaves, but we gotta get some leaves on there anyway. All right, so I'm going to paint in the center vein of this leaf. Oh, I'm sorry. It's hard for me to remember where I was, and Caitlin's really nice not to be going, you're out of camera range. <laughs> I can remind you. Well, please do, okay. because she's gonna be like, I said you're out of camera range 3,000 times <laughs> in a half an hour. All right, so we're going to tap and dab that green color on around the outside edge of the leaf. And we're gonna blot some of that off and move some of that color in toward the center of the leaf. And hopefully you'll be painting this for your special Valentine. This is giving you plenty of time to get it done before the big day, as it were. All right, so I'm gonna pull some veins out from the center vein out to the outside edge. And I can't remember if it was Shakespeare or Guns N' Roses that said every rose has its thorns. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody let Caitlin know in the comments. I think it's the latter. <laughs> I think maybe it is. Okay, so that was, that was my joke for the night. I'm here all week, folks. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and dry everything and then we can come back and darken any places that we need to. Okay, I am going to come back and add a little bit more dark color here and there to my leaves. So dampened my brush, blotted off the excess moisture, picking up blending gel and some thicket. Now if you didn't have thicket, you could use any dark green color that you have. I just think thicket's a really nice dark green color. All right, so now we've got that mixture of blending gel and thicket on my brush, and I'm going to darken that center vein, darken some of these radiating vein lines, and add a little extra dark color kind of at the bottom edge of that leaf and along the outside edge. Keep in mind that the focus of this painting is really going to be that rosebud, and we are going to paint it tonight. <laughs> but we have to get in the supporting players. So I think that's all I'm going to do to that leaf, because I've added some of that extra dark there. And this little leaf at the bottom, it's going to get even more darker color. And I'm just tapping and patting that on. But I don't want it to look like I've outlined anything just with that same dark color. So the tapping and patting will give you an irregular uh, outline of color and that's what you want. You don't want it all the same width and the same 
value all the way around the leaf. Even if you're painting something simple, you want to make sure that it is very interesting for someone who is looking at your painting. All right, let's put a little bit more dark right up here on this leaf that is covered over by our sepal there. So we're going to make that super dark underneath. Paula in the comments mentioned that she thinks that it might be Poison who's saying every rose has a thorn. Oh, it, I mean, it could be. Who knows? I don't know. Just before we went live tonight, was introducing Caitlin to the Carpenters. And it's hard to believe that little Karen Carpenter has been gone for almost 40 years. And I'm sure someone is typing in the comments right now that she had the voice of an angel. Yeah, her <laughs> voice was very pretty. Yeah. All right, so putting in some little veins here that I think I missed earlier. Okay, I'm going to zoom in really, really, really far. <laughs> okay, there you go. Can so you see them? I'm going to turn this right side up so that people know where everything is. All right, so those are our leaves. And now we have three sepals that we're going to paint and I'm just shifting in my chair a little bit and we will once again thick it and some blending gel so that we have time to work with this stuff and I'm going to start right next to the rose and put that dark color there and then I'm going to go up on the chisel edge not the chisel edge the point of the brush and Paint in the outside edge of this sepal. And I'm going to take that excess paint off my brush and just tap that color on and leave a little bit of a highlight. All right, so that's one sepal done. Let's move on to the middle one. And we're going to put that dark color right up next to that rosebud. And we're going to go on the tip of our brush right around the edge of the sepal. And I'm going to take some of that color off my brush, blot it on my towel so I don't have excess moisture in my brush and we're just going to pat and kind of soften that on. All right, can you see that? There you go. All right, now we're going to come over here and do the same thing on this other one, but we're going to make sure that we've got our dark color right up next to our rosebud and then we're going to pull this color down And on the other edge of our leaf, take the color out of our brush, blot the excess moisture out, and we're going to just barely let some of this green show up in our sepal, but we want that leaf to look dark underneath it. All right, real quick, I'm going to hold this up. If you actually keep it on the white palette paper, uh -huh. it should stay in focus if I zoom in. Okay. And you might just have to slide it so it's in there. There you go. Frame. Okay, that's good. Thank yeah. you. All right, so we're going to dry this real quick. And we're just going to darken these a little bit. Right where we put our dark color before, we're going to put some extra dark. And I'm just tapping and dabbing some of that on and creating a little bit of extra dark shading there. And we're going to do it right on the center sepal. 
and if you are really not fussing too much with this, this goes super, super fast. All right, and this is one of those things, well, Caitlin's already got this focused in there. All right, this is one of those things where you don't have to beat someone over the head to give them the information that that's the little part of the rose that turns back. All right, so I'm gonna take some more Thicket, just getting some extra dark color, and we are going to paint in our little stem of our rosebud. So it's gonna come right down here and there's a little bumpy knob on there. And then I'm going right back down on my tip. And you just wanna make sure that you've got everything kind of connected where it needs to. All right, so there are our leaves and our stem and we are ready to shift gears to our rosebud now i'm also going to set down my round brush for a little while and i'm going to use a little flat brush this is probably an eight flat brush and i'm going to put out a little berry wine on my palette now we're not using many colors tonight so we have to make sure to use them carefully all right, I'm going to pick up a little blending gel on my brush and a little baby pink on one corner of the brush and a little berry wine on the other corner of my brush. All right, so I'm creating a gradient of baby pink over to berry wine. And I've got some blending gel in the brush, so this is gonna stay wet and workable for a little while. All right. I'm thinking that berry wine is pretty dark on my, uh, gonna be pretty dark on my rosebud. So I'm just touching the whole edge of the brush into baby pink so that we are softening that berry wine so it's not quite so harsh. Maybe one will just a whole nother dab of baby pink on there. because we want our rosebud to be very, very soft. All right, so we're gonna start over here on the left side of our rose. And I'm gonna try to turn this and still keep it on camera. There we go. Okay, what I'm going to do is start right down at the bottom of my rose, and I'm going to use the corner of the brush and put that next to the center of the rosebud and now I'm going to pat to fill in the outside edge of that rosebud petal. Could you repeat the size of the brush for the rose? I think it's a number eight flat. Okay, thank you. You you want to use a brush that you think is too big for the area. Hmm. All right, so now I'm going to make sure that I've got that outside edge of the rosebud baby pink and my very soft berry wine is next to the main portion of the rosebud and that's what it looks like okay super simple we're not making this harder than it has to be if i want to highlight this i can pick up a little white and baby pink just make a little mixture here on my palette and I can, because this is probably still damp because of the blending gel, right in the middle of this petal where it would be rolling over on itself, I can come back in and I can tap and pat a little highlight on. You see that little highlight there? Right down the center of that rosebud, or that, uh, that rose petal. Mm -hmm. All right, and now I'm going to just wipe my brush off, set the brush over that highlight, and tap, tap, tap to soften it in. Okay, you see it's softened and it's not like a hard white stripe now. Whew, that was one whole rose petal and we're done with that one. <laughs> okay, so nothing difficult there, but we're gonna do the one next to it. 
All right, so blending gel on my brush. Let's pick up some baby pink and then slide one corner into my berry wine so that we have soft berry wine and baby pink on our brush. Now, if you don't have berry wine and you want to use something like June berry or um, black cherry or whatever color you want to, that's fine. Just make sure that you soften it with your light pink color. All right, so I'm going to go again up on the corner of the brush and just use the corner to start applying that soft berry wine. I'm just using the corner of the brush there to get that dark color on there. All right, and then I'm going to make sure I've got plenty of baby pink on the edge of the brush. And I'm going to come in and fill in the outside edge of that and just tap and blend where it meets my berry wine. And I'm trying to do this so that you all can see exactly what I'm doing. And we're making this as easy as we possibly can. Because no one wants to hate their rosebud and if it's hard to paint it, you will not like it. All right, just trying to get this outside edge of my petal smooth because our rose petals are not fuzzy. All right, so there is our second petal and we can take and add that white highlight down there if we want to. So just picked up a little bit of white and we're gonna use the edge of our brush and we're going right down the middle so you can see that it's kind of bright and harsh on there right now. So we're going to wipe our brush and then we're going to straddle that white highlight and just tap and pat and that will soften that highlight just like that. And whoo, we've done two rose petals. All right, let's come over here and do this petal that is kind of well, let's do this middle one that's kind of hiding under there. All right, so a little blending gel and a little baby pink. All right, and let's just paint in this whole petal. All right, then we're going to kind of pick up a little berry wine on the corner of our brush. And we are now going to gently blend this berry wine in underneath um, the rose petal where it's flipping over on itself. Let's wipe our brush off and let's pat and soften that. And we can also just carry that berry wine right down there like that. So we've extended the shading down there. Let's wipe our brush again and give it a quick, very soft blend. Okay, we've done another petal, almost another petal, but we're going to do this petal that goes kind of underneath, or there's a little bit of a petal at the back there. So we're going to take our baby pink and a little blending gel. And because we're using the blending gel, our paint's not drying and we don't have to lose our mind trying to get everything done really, really quickly. All right, so I'm going to paint in this petal just using the corner of my brush. And there's not a lot of petal there to work with. So we're painting that in. Then I'll pick up a little berry wine on the corner of my brush, blend it here on the palette, and that's making it much easier to apply this darker pink color and shade where that petal rolls over 
on top of the other one. And I gotta turn this so that I can get a little baby pink right out here on this edge. There we go. All right, so another petal done. We are cooking with gas. All right, so we've got another petal here, and then this petal has um, rolls over on top of itself. So let's fill this in with a little baby pink and some blending gel. And this goes down right next to those sepals. And then we carefully fill it in. And I'm having to kind of make this up as I go along because I thought I had enough pattern there to see, but we don't. Or maybe we do. Okay, so we're filling that in and we're going to pick up a little bit of berry wine on the corner of our brush. And we will shade underneath where this petal is rolling over on top of this part of the rose. All right, do you see how we did that? That was really quick and easy. All right, let's paint the whole inside of our rose next. What? We're going to do all of that at once? Yes, we are going to do it all at once. So I'm going to have my brush loaded with baby pink and one edge into the berry wine. And I am going to just shade the bottom portion of that interior of my rose. And it looks something like that. I'm going to add a little bit of extra berry wine down in here just to make sure that that looks nice and well shaded. All right, then we're going to pat this up and we're going to pick up some extra baby pink on the opposite side of our brush and we're going to make sure that we have the top portion of our flower nicely painted in and then we've kind of softened our center so it looks a little bit like that. All right, let's, all right, how am I going to say this? We're going to do a really crappy job of drying this. I want to just dry it enough so that it gets sticky. Doesn't have to be completely dry, but just sticky. Okay, so I'm going to pretend that that's just sticky. And what I'm going to do is take a little bit of moisture on my brush, so a little water on my brush, take some of the excess off because I don't need it that wet, and I'm going to pick up some white, and I want to make sure that this white is a little fluid, a little juicy, does not need to be thin like ink, just want it so that it's going to flow. All right. You could use a liner brush if you wanted to. I'm using my number six round, remembering that it comes to the same size point. All right. And let's see how I'm going to do this. I'm going to start and kind of not quite at the outside edge. I'm going to start to paint a very loosely defined spiral. So you can see the start of that spiral there. It is not a perfectly smooth, even, fine line. It's got some waviness to it. It's got uh, some thicker areas and some thinner areas, which is exactly what we want. All right, look at that center of the rose, yay! That was the hardest part of the whole painting, is just letting yourself kind of paint this little spiral on and not 
freak out if it's not exactly perfect. It's just kind of a little whimsical little spiral there to indicate what's going on inside that rose. Whew. We almost need to take a break, but we don't have time to take a break. <laughs> we have a couple of more petals to paint, and these are both kind of like the rolled uh, over edges of our rose petals. So I'm going to take my round brush and some baby pink and a little blending gel. And I'm going to do this little tiny one here first. Sorry, I'm trying to keep it in range for everybody to see, but I'm going to paint this little rolled petal in with my baby pink. And I'm going to pick up a tiny dab of black cherry and kind of just work that in at the end of the brush. And I'm going to apply shading where that roll disappears behind the other uh, rose petal roll. All right, so that's that shading right there. And let's see what I'm going to do next. I'm going to take some of that same darker pink because it's definitely not baby pink and it is not black cherry. It's just a little bit of a darker pink. And I'm going to tap some of that kind of along the top of that petal. It may or may not show up for you, but it's there and it will show up in just a moment. All right, so we're going to do the same thing on this petal here. So we're taking our baby pink and some blending gel. And we're going to paint in this petal here. And if your petal is a little different than mine, that's okay. All roses are different. And as you know, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. I do know that is not Guns N' Roses. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to add a dab of that uh, berry wine and make a darker pink color. And we're going to put that kind of along the top edge just so that our little rolled over rose petal has some value change on it. All right, so you can see that now. It's not just a solid pink. All right, now we're going to do another bad job of drying this. We just want it to get a little bit sticky. All right, I'm going to wipe out my round brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of white. And this is probably going to get some pink in it, so it's not pure white, and that's perfectly fine. And what I'm going to do is tap and dab on a little white highlight that follows the crest of this rolled petal. So I'm going to start, and it's not at the top of the petal, and it doesn't follow the contour at the roughly edge of the petal, but you can see it is a curved or arced line there. All right, let's wipe our brush off, pick up some of that baby pink, and we're just going to come in and kind of touch the edges of that white highlight on both sides. And that's literally all I'm doing is just touching the white highlight so that it is not a solid line. All right. There is that highlight softened in there. And we're going to do the same thing on this other little petal. Pick up that white. Touch it on following the crest of that rolled petal. Wipe our brush off. And then we're literally just going to tickle the edges of that white highlight. All you want to do is to make sure that that highlight on that petal does not look like a solid white line. 
and I can come back and I can touch it in a couple of places and just build that up a bit. Okay. That, my friends, is our pink rosebud for the evening, done with four colors of paint and some blending gel. So did we have any questions, Caitlin? Uh, it does not look like it. Okay. Well, I hope that everybody uh, enjoyed this and will uh, have fun painting in this style. It's very loose. It is not... Um, done in any sort of tedious way. You just have to relax and kind of go with it. This is all just dabbed on color and then very, very simple painting to make that little rosebud. So I can't wait to see your uh, paintings. Uh, you can use, you can post them in the group using the hashtag Let's Paint Challenge. And I encourage you, if you're not already a member of the Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group to take a minute Find that group on Facebook and join us there. So thank you, Caitlin, for moderating tonight, and we appreciate you joining.